Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we're taking a look at a very special show. This show has to do with a fundraiser, and for those of you that are drinkers, you'll probably enjoy this one. It's a wine tasting one that See Me Sunset put on. And with us today, uh, my guest is Cindy Belmonte. Cindy, welcome. Thank you, Wade. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a native Californian, so I've been here my whole entire life. I've run the gamut of different industries that I've been in over my career from manufacturing, court reporting, education, marketing, and private gold savings. Great. So what got you into Rotary? Actually a Rotary event. Uh, one of my neighbors, Laura Simonsgard, uh, she would always invite me to the Cajun Festival, which is one of the biggest Cajun festivals east of the Mississippi. And I always thought it was a great time selling beads and little stuffed alligators and pouring beer. And I really, really didn't know what I was doing there other than having a great time until I actually read in the paper that it was put on by Rotary and all the different uh, benefactors, it was benefiting. And I was like, wow, that's what Rotary is. Mm. That's a great event, by the way. It's huge, <laughs> very yes. big. How many people go to that event? Oh, I would say probably 60,000 maybe. Yeah, that's about right. I, I'm guessing that too. Um, so in Rotary, when did you join? How long have you been with Rotary? Well, actually, um, I'm the charter member, a charter member of the Rotary Club of Simi Sunset. We chartered in 2002, and I've been a past president. I actually served with you in 2006 <laughs> and 2007, right. and currently I'm international chair for our club. Okay. Um, and then your club, size-wise, is, is how many members? Actually, right now we are at 42. We've wow. just gone from a small club to a medium club. Great. Uh, and you're the Sunset Club. Yes. We've been, actually, we were the Simi Sunset Club <laughs> to start off with. We had a little uh, time where we were the Simi Sunset Morning Edition. We were just trying to gain new members with the economy the way it was, and then we decided evening was back where we wanted to be, and we've been uh, we've been growing ever since. Great, great. Let's uh, well, tell us a little bit about the event, the uh, wine tasting event. How how did you come up with the idea? Well, actually, I did not come up with the idea, but I was approached by the idea. Uh, when we first started our club, we had what we called a silent fundraiser. We sold across the U.S. the rotary logoed canopies, the event canopies. Right. And a couple of years ago, we basically uh, were not able to get them from the manufacturer, a nice quality canopy, so we sort of lost that fundraiser. And just this summer, we had my high school reunion, and we had a, not just my year, but a couple of years. And a friend of mine that I've known since junior high said, oh, I always see you on Facebook, and you're always doing these rotary events. Uh, are you looking for a fundraiser? And I said, well, always we're looking for a fundraiser. What do you have? And so she introduced me to a wine club. And she's in the wine industry up here in um, Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties. And so she explained it to me a little bit. And I thought, well, that's just right up, you know, right up our alley. And it's kind of a, I thought of it as a silent fundraiser for our club. So when I pitched it to the club, it was, you know, this is something to replace that canopy fundraiser. And it's very, actually, it's sort of new with this. It's called World's Best Wine Clubs. And they're fairly new with not a whole lot of clubs involved. And I said, well, in order to let people know about it, why don't we have a kickoff wine tasting event? And that's what we came up with. That's a great idea. Now, it's a fundraiser, so tell us a little bit where the funds go. Well, actually, this fundraiser... Um, was basically just to get us started with the wine club, to introduce the wine club. And ultimately, um, since we might be able to have an opportunity to like advertise in the Rotarian magazine, which would go across the country, funds will still go locally, which of course they're going to go to education, they're going to go to the hospitals, scholarships, what all the CME Rotary Clubs, what all most Rotary Clubs want their funds to go to. And if we do expand our wine club across the country, then we're actually going to take some of those funds and use them internationally. Wow. So it's going to get big. It's yes. more than just we're the event. So. It, yes. It's a kickoff to a very large project then. We hope so. Great. That sounds good. Well, let's jump into some of the pictures that you brought uh, okay. with you. Um, we'll start with the first one, which is a picture, I believe, of the golf course where you hosted it at. Yes. Um, I just wanted to add that because we held it at Moore Park Country Club. Okay. And there was a couple of different reasons for it being at a golf country club. Um, it is a gorgeous venue. 
since group five is the three CME clubs and the two more park clubs, it was a nice venue right in between. And we wanted to have it close that anybody could get to. But part of the event, just for this kickoff event, was a golf book signing. And I'll get into that in just um, when we get to the a couple of very, pictures Very later. interesting. So you actually incorporated all five clubs then for this event. Yes. They had buy-in and they helped you out. That's great. Okay. The next picture you have is a picture that looks like your uh, committee group. Yeah, well, that's, this is registration. So since this was a brand new event, we had to basically start from scratch. And we came up with our Simi Sunset Rotary and the Rotary logo, the wristbands, because this was um, a wine tasting event. So we had to make sure people were over 21. It allowed us to know who paid for the event. And uh, that was just you know a couple of things that we needed to you know, put into our itinerary of getting ready for uh, for a brand new event. Well, let's, let's name a few of those since they're going to be on the screen for us. Okay, uh, forefront is Lizzie Whitlock. She is one of our brand new members, and uh, she is just a dynamo. Next to her is Rob Keegan, and he's been with us, not a charter member, but probably uh, at least 10 years. Rick Grossman, he's the one holding up the, uh, the, uh, the wristbands. Um, he is our past president uh, two times back. And I believe one of the, I'm trying to think if that was when we were the best small club. Mm -hmm. And past that is our charger president, Kelly Gilliland, mm -hmm. who came from the Simi Sunrise Club and was our first president to charter the club. And when we had our 10 year anniversary and when we were trying to revitalize the club when we went to the mornings, he, he was a two time president. Great. And beyond that is another brand new member, Reed Galloway. And he was helping sign ups with the actual wine club for wow. people to sign up. Good participation of members then. We, we had, had a, a very good there. turnout good of for members. You. That's yes. great. Next picture we have is a, looks like a centerpiece possibly. Yes. So we did it on Sunday, September 11th. So it was 9-11. And so we decided to go with a, obviously a patriotic decor. And it was a wine tasting event, so the the vases had corks in it, and then everything was red, white, and blue. So it was, you know, very, very nice and patriotic. Very, and very nice. It fit the, it fit the occasion. Great. And then the next picture we have looks like uh, somebody talking about the wines. Correct. This is Chris Kern. Now he is the president of World's Best Wine Clubs, and also I believe it's called Paso Robles. Paso Robles Wine Club, okay. and he is a wine expert. So he is the one that goes out and picks the wines for our wine shipments. Uh -huh. So like I said, this is a kickoff for the wine club. The wine club consists of three bottles of wine delivered four times a year. And each of the, uh, the, the wines, there's two reds and one white, they're always going to be three different wineries. So it's not like when you belong to just one winery. He picks the wineries, he picks the wines, and the reason we had the kickoff wine tasting was the question I got when I proposed it to the club and to anybody else is, well, how do we know the quality of the wines? So that was you know, really one of the reasons for the wine tasting. So not only did we get to taste the wines in the first shipment for September, but we also got to taste those wineries' other wines. So we would know the quality of, say for instance, Sculptera was one of the wines that the, the white, the Viognier came from. But he brought four different wines wow. that we could taste. So we could see, yes, we really like the wines from that, that particular winery. So he was explaining about the wine club. And if you go on to the next one where Reed was at, this is where we actually had the wine sign up. We would stamp the, the wine club member, if the, either they were already previously a wine club member before the event, or they signed up that day, they got a stamp because they were going to get the golf book that I'm going to talk about okay. in, in just a moment. But we could sign them up right then and there for the wine club. And then September will be their first shipment. And what's really great is December is the second shipment. So just in time for, for Christmas and the holidays. Great. That, that's a <laughs> great idea. Looks like the wines were pretty successful also. Yes. The next picture looks like a picture with some food there. It looks like you well, included a little yeah, enticement absolutely. there with that. Absolutely. With any event, you know, the food spread is, is key to it. Right. You, with wine tasting, we did it from 3 to 5 in the afternoon. So it was before dinner. So basically, 
Um, you can see from that one and the following one, the amazing cheeses we had. We had an amazing fruit spread. And actually, it was, it was just perfect because, you know, it, so people weren't just tasting wine with nothing, you know, to, to have a bite, bite with. And uh, it, it just was absolutely beautiful. Now, how many people did you have? Would you we had guess? roughly around 100, wow. a little over 100 people, oh, I would say. And because of the venue, uh, Mark Park Country Club, that room that you hosted in it had a lot of room there. It, it was, was pretty huge because yeah. we, we did pre-sales, but we also did advertising and we had, um, we, we advertised to the golf community and to the wine tasting community, the Rotary community, friends and family. And so we really had no idea how many people we were going to have, actually. Now, now was your um, attended audience actually a good cross-section of all those groups? I would say so. Good, I would say good. so. So you had a little bit of outreach, a little bit of Rotary awareness for those that weren't in Rotary. Exactly. Well, that's great. Outstanding. Next picture we have is... This was very, very special. This is the Abbey Road Choir Group from Santa Susana High School in Simi Valley. Okay. Just recently, they performed at Nancy Reagan's funeral up at the uh, Ronald Reagan Library. Wow. And they are very accomplished. I thought we were only, only going to have like three or four of them. And we basically got their whole entourage. So uh, this is to start off with. They actually did the national anthem, which was really nice. And they, they did uh, classical, like Phantom of the Opera. They, did, they performed together. They performed with a solo with background, and they also did actual solos. And they were, they were a very gr good accompaniment and uh, background for this event. And then they finished off with another patriotic song for 9-11. Very nice. Then your next picture looks like uh, the wine displays. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the first winery. It's Bianchi Vineyards, and that's up in San Luis Obispo. And they also brought uh, a number of different wines. They brought a Moscato. They brought a Petit Syrah, which is the one that was going to be in the wine shipment. And they also brought a blend, of what's called a GSME, a Grenache Syrah Movedra blend. So again, so we could taste all different kinds of wines that they produce. So that, that was very successful for them as well. Great, great. Then the next picture, it looks like this is the one we uh We've wanted to highlight here, to. yeah. This is Mr. Rudy Duran. And what's important about Mr. Rudy Duran is he was Tiger Woods' first golf coach from ages four to 10. And twofold, why we had him there, why we had it at the golf course is obviously he was a golf coach and actually still is. He wrote a book in Every Kid There Lurks a Tiger and he also produces wine. He has a private wine label called Front Nine Wines. So golf related. And this was the first time anybody got to taste his 2014, I believe, Primitivo. And Primitivo is basically the, it's the start of where Zinfandel came from. Mm -hmm. It's a related grape. And so he was there. So anybody who got the wine club before or that day and got that wine stamp, got his book signed and um, dedicated to them especially. So it was, a, it was kind of a really good combination to have him there as a, he's not the winemaker, his actual winemaker for this wine, he was a coach for, a golf coach when, the, um, when that student right. was 15 years old, he went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, studied wine, and is now a winemaker and make, besides his wine, making other wines as well. So it was, a, it was a really nice turnaround for him. That is. So tell us a little bit about the book. How successful is that as far as drawing people in? You know, I did not ask about that because if anybody came not for the wine tasting but came specifically to see him and his book, he was going to sell the book mm -hmm. and sign it for them and then uh, give a donation back to the club. Oh, nice. So nice. I, I wasn't on that end to see how well he did with that. Okay. Was he looking pretty busy? He looked pretty busy, That's good. yes. good. Yes. So um, as far as the success, would you, do you have a number uh, roughly of how many people? Well, yeah. I, our goal was 100 people. Right. So I know we hit our goal. We would have loved to exceed our goal, but we have a whole lot of ideas yeah. for maybe doing it a yearly one, probably the same time of year, and maybe having it at a different location where maybe the costs of the location weren't quite so high, so it wasn't as much for somebody to attend, and we could maybe add 
other aspects of it, like you know, like cigars and wine go together, so we sure. could have a cigar yeah. venue right. or a vendor, and and do some different. We've got a lot of ideas uh, coming up from just this uh, first time event. Got it. So um, with the golf being one of the venues or the venue this specific mm -hmm. time, did you incorporate in any golf with that, or was that just? Kind of the location. It was, it was the location and it was the golf book and the golf signing and okay. him being a, a golf coach and being a wine, uh, you know, a wine distributor, let's say, at the same time. So that's the reason why we, we picked all of those together. Got it. So potentially it could move, like you say, to a different venue. Correct. Any type. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And the uh, last picture we have here is a picture... Well, no event would be successful without a raffle, a great raffle. <laughs> and if you could see next, so this is Jill Haney. Right. Um, she is not, I don't believe she's a charter member, but another longtime member, probably 10, 12 years. And if you look on the table, every winery that's in the shipment, it was the Sculptura Viognier, the Front Nine Wines uh, Primitivo, and then Bianchi's Petite Syrah. They all donated one bottle for the raffle, but if you see that very large bottle there, right, right. Bianchi donated, it's called a three liter double magnum. It is absolutely huge, just like four <laughs> bottles of wine. That is and huge. so that what we did we raffled that off first. So that was absolutely, you know, the hit. Every we waited till the end of the the event to do the raffle. We also, they also donated a couple t-shirts. So oh. just to make it fun and we probably brought in half the money just from that raffle as well. Great, great. Now, did any of the uh, wineries send representatives? Just, just yes. Um, yes. Well, basically, uh, because Frontline Wines is what we consider the, a boutique winery, right. and this, they don't have their own tasting room. So probably every shipment is going to have a boutique winery just okay. like that, where the normal, if you were wine tasting in Santa Barbara County or in San Luis Obispo County, you wouldn't find this wine. So that's where or that's like, you know, the little secret wine, or that's what our wine expert's going to bring to okay. this wine club. That's gonna be unique. Sculptera and Bianchi both had their representatives that were pouring, talking about the wine, the nuances of the wine, each one, and what, you know, what they could be paired with. So yes, they did have their people there pouring the wines. Good, so um, my thought would be then, you're actually creating potential shortage or success by using the boutique wineries if your program gets as big as it's going to be nationwide. But remember, okay, this is just for the September shipment. True. When it comes to December, there's going to be three different wineries. That was the reason for the wine tasting. Okay. Because we right now we don't know what the three uh, new ones will be for the December shipment. We'll probably get that um, maybe about a month ahead. And then again, with social media, we can use YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Chris will do a short YouTube video on what the three new wines are going to be that will be coming out with that shipment. So now we can, we can have a whole new marketing campaign. Great. Oh, that's outstanding. Now that we uh, went through most of the pictures, we kind of have a pretty good idea of the event itself. Tell us about some of the challenges that you faced with this that you didn't anticipate. Well, with the event. I heard about it in the end of June. And this is the beginning of September. That is not a lot of time to put on a, an event. Right. So that was a major challenge. And marketing is always a challenge. And, and getting a buy-in from our club and getting them to actually help out with the marketing. So I would say those were the main challenges. Being in Rotary for 14 years and participating in many, many, many fundraisers and events, I don't think putting it on itself was a challenge. It was just figuring where, where did we want it, you know, how did we want to market it, and just get the word out. So that was pretty much the time, time that, management, time shortage. That, was. that is uh, very impressive, <laughs> by the way. Starting in June to, to finish that thing up, wow, uh, that, that is great. So what were some of the successes that you think you had? Well, the successes are we got a lot of signups, so we were really happy with that. Another thing is now we have, we have these photos. Well, actually, we've got hundreds of photos. We're going to be taking all the photos and 
the information about the wine club and we're going to be displaying it at the upcoming district conference. Oh, great. So it's something that we can easily have out at a table that people can get information. They just need to go by the table, okay. pick up the information. We don't even have to man the table. It will speak for itself. Nice. And we can just talk, you know, district conference is a great time to meet up with people True. that we don't see very often and we've got cards we can hand out and hopefully they'll tell their their friends and family as well because especially with that December shipment coming up you can actually give somebody a gift membership where you could sign up and send them one gift shipment that will come to them in December one time only oh, that's great. or you can order if you are join the wine club say myself I can order a gift shipment to myself and now I've got an extra three bottles right. that now I've got three gifts so so that timing is going to be I think well, be very great. good for us as it well. will be especially with wine at a district conference exactly seems to mix well yeah <laughs> might have might have to take some with me and have some little pourings if the uh, if the uh, venue allows it and that's right <laughs> So how do you think uh, your, your club took to it? Did you get as much participation as you anticipated? Yes, we, did. we had a few people that, you know, things always sure. happen at the last minute, but we had more than enough people that were there just to enjoy the event, that were there to back us up and fill in all the different positions that we needed. We had, I think we had great turnout from our club. Great, great, and buy-in also then, I would, I would guess. Yes, exactly. We yeah. actually, of course, we're Rotarians, we're competitive, <laughs> and tonight we have our meeting, we will have, we did a racetrack, and basically we've got little cars that will show each member, because we actually get count, uh, we are taking into consideration when we refer somebody not monetarily or anything but just for our camp right. competition and at the end of the year whoever has the most referrals for the wine club is going to get a free year of <laughs> of the wine club so that sounds like your club very competitive exactly <laughs> i've noticed that for a while they do great work by the way now did you have um with the other clubs involved the other four clubs uh, did they help out actually with the event also? not at all Okay. No. Okay. Uh, in fact, Rick, Rick Grossman, that's what he, his interpretation when he first heard it, he thought, well, how are we going to divide it between all clubs? Yeah. I said, yeah. we're not going to divide it between all clubs. This is our event. We are inviting all the clubs to participate with us because where the money's going to go is going to benefit all our communities. True. And true. we would like their buy-in so that this is a great event where we're not asking for sponsors. Mm -hmm. We all have com competition of asking the same sure. companies for sponsorship, for giveaways and gift certificates. We don't have to do that. But now we can, we can um, <clears throat> collaborate for where the funds go, where we all want the funds to go. Got it. Okay. Um, but I'm sure they helped you out selling the tickets, bringing people in for you. Or? I would hope so. Okay, you don't know that for <laughs> yeah, sure then. Yeah, that, that I don't know because if they just sent somebody, we just used Eventbrite. Uh -huh. It's a nice, easy way to send people to get tickets so you have an idea of, you know, pre-ticket pre sales. Got it, got it. Now, how about the partnership with, um, say, Rudy? Did, did that, is that something that you're going to be moving forward or is that more or less kind I think of that might have been a one-time okay. thing unless, see, actually the Viognier through Sculptera, again, because he's a boutique winery, Sculptera is using their name. They're not even using Front Nine Wines, which I, I didn't get a chance to ask him why. Okay. But the Viognier is his wine, but I think it will be marketed through Sculptera, and it was absolutely delicious. Mm. So uh, that's, that, again, I think is just a one-time, unless he comes, you know, maybe in a year or two, if he comes out with another, you know, premium wine that Chris decides is, is worthy of the wine club, then then we'll have another partnership with him. Great, great. A little feedback from you and the rest of the group, the wines themselves. Uh, since Chris is bringing those forward, would you say that was a success, having that partnership with him selecting the wines for you? Yes, and he did, he did have like the last shipment, which would have been um, June, I believe, which you know, obviously we weren't participating in, but he brought one of each of those wines so people could see, well, what was the last shipment? And now they see what is this shipment and tasting what was in this shipment and those wineries, wines. I liked all of them. I thought, I thought they were great. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Um, in the future, then, do you plan on, as it gets larger, is it something that you will ideally anticipate actually increasing membership with also with this knowledge and program? Well, that is the idea with the wine club. This, what, the, the event was a kickoff. The wine club is what we're hoping to grow. And what is 
exceptionally different about this wine club than any other wine club is 25% comes back to Rotary. Wow, and that's great. Most wine clubs, you don't get a tax write-off. Every person who's a wine club member gets a tax write-off, and the wine club itself will be sending each and every member basically, you know, a tax receipt for their for however many shipments they've had, you know, up to four per year. They'll be getting a tax receipt for for the donation that they made by being a wine club member. Well, that is outstanding. Um, going back to your club now, where does your club actually meet? What's, what's the location of that? We, Oddly enough, we meet at Wood Ranch Golf Club. Okay. We meet on Tuesday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. And we, the reason we did it, they had, they had a conflict where we, we just couldn't get a date soon enough to fit the sh September shipment. And that's why we actually had to go to uh, Moore Park Country okay. Club okay. for the event. But every week, Tuesday, Tuesday evenings, and we just do a salad bar. So okay. it's also a very inexpensive makeup for anybody that wants to come. That is, sounds great. So what is the cost of a guest, I would say? $15. $15, that is a good deal. Yes. Yeah, nice, nice. And you said 42 members right now? Correct. We just, indu uh, we just inducted our, I believe it was our 42nd member just last week. Wow, wow. Okay, um, as far as uh, demographics and how your club fits into Simi Valley, the community, do you, do you see a specific age group or is it a pretty good blend of overall? I'd say we're a pretty good blend. We have... I think our youngest member is 25. Wow. And I don't want to say what the oldest member is, but we're not a super old cl club. Uh, I think by having it in the evening, and we used to be at 6 o'clock, and by moving it to 7, we really oh, yeah. are getting those the younger people who have to work until 6 o'clock, gives them time you know, to, to get off, get to, the, get to the venue, and I think that's been our success with, uh, with the younger people. Uh, coming into the club. Great. Well, Cindy, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, great presentation. Looks like a great event. Uh, Going to be moving forward with that. And, you know, how much better could it be than drinking wine with it and making money doing the same thing? With that, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Take a look at the, uh, the wine club and see what that does for you because wine's out there and you get 25% that's going to benefit Rotary and your community. With that, thank you very much and we will see you next time.